Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. is off, and Conor Ben is now literally fighting for his career. What in the world happened? How did he fail the drug test? What was the drug? What happens next? Should this fight even have been called off? So much to discuss, so much to get through. Let's go. Right, okay, so first things first, let's clarify all the details. Conor Ben versus Chris Eubank Jr. called off due to a failed drugs test. Conor Ben returned an adverse analytical finding for traces of a fertility drug on Wednesday with the fight prohibited by the British Boxing Board of Control. Conor Ben has had a stinky fight for his reputation and his career right now. But why would someone take a fertility drug before a fight to improve their performance? Okay, we need to get into this. So this particular drug in question is called clomiphene. It is normally prescribed to women to increase their fertility, okay? Clomiphene acts within the body to increase the amount of hormones that your brain produces, particularly the hormones FSH and LH, if you're interested, okay? In a woman, these hormones will act on the ovaries to increase, basically, the amount of eggs they produce and increase their chances of conceiving, of being able to have a baby, okay? However, in men, we don't have ovaries, we have testes, and as a result of that, those medications will work differently. Clomiphene works on the male body to increase the amount of testosterone running through their system, essentially, okay? So it indirectly increases testosterone in males, okay? The consequence of that is increased testosterone can increase the amount of muscle mass you can produce, increase the amount of power that you can produce, obviously can just basically make you a better athlete, a stronger fighter, and give you an unfair advantage, which is why it is banned. But it has been used in the past by athletes, including the legendary Block Lesnar and the legendary John Jones. They've both been banned in the past for this type of thing within the UFC. So that is why someone might be tempted to use it. With that having all been said, is Conor Ben actually a drugs cheat and the answer is well technically we do not know yet okay and there's two reasons for that number one the report states that his sample a tested positive for traces of this fertility drug sample a when you are part of the world anti-doping program okay as an athlete you basically sign up and you do your whereabouts and people can roll up on you at any point and ask for a p sample and to test if you are positive for using drugs. Essentially, that's the short of it, okay? When they do this, basically, the athlete produces two samples. Well, they produce one sample, which is split into two, okay? One is the sample A. That is sent straight off to the lab for specialist testing. But they also produce a sample B. Now, sample B is frozen in case it needed to be used, okay? So if you test positive in your sample A, if there's an adverse finding, as they've been calling it, the athlete basically at that point has a chance to come clean and say, listen, I I did this and that's why it's positive. Or they can ask for their sample B to be tested, okay? If their sample B is positive, they are in massive trouble. And I will get back to that for you. But if their sample B is negative for an adverse analytical finding, they're actually clean. There's no strike on their record and they can crack on, okay? So technically, we're not 100% sure until he has that sample B tested. Secondly, it wasn't actually the World Anti-Doping Organization that did this particular test. It was a voluntary, it was called VADA, the Voluntary Anti-Doping Association, I believe it's called. Okay, they work specifically with boxing and with MMA and they are a private company which use this, they actually use the same labs and the same equipment as the World Anti-Doping Organization but they are a private company and they just basically work to try and help WADA out when they can't do their testing. All they can do is once they found something, they just present it to WADA, they present it to the regulatory body and the regulatory body then makes a decision. In this case, the British Board of Boxing Control has made the decision to not ratify this fight, which is why it has not gone ahead. Do I think that was the right decision? Probably on balance, yes, for two reasons. Firstly, if there's any chance that this fight is unfair, it's dangerous as putting Chris Eubank Jr.'s life at risk. So we can't do that. But secondly, I don't think Conor Ben's head would be in the right place. With all that speculation on him, he wouldn't have been in the right place. He would have put himself in danger. So I think the best thing to do was just call it off. They redo it another time if and when he tests negative if he tests positive however what happens now i looked actually previously on the uk anti-doping website to see what happened last time a boxer tested positive for clomiphene for clomiphene and they got a four-year ban normally these things are a two to four-year ban and he won't be able to fight in the uk in fights ratified by the british board of boxing control doesn't mean he might not won't be able to fight anywhere but definitely within britain for a two to four year stretch if he tests positive 
he's probably going to be out. So that's his prime, really. So he's in a he's in a very, very, very sticky spot. Listen, these things happen. If you want more details about the whole anti-doping process and how someone could fail a drugs test, put it in the comments. I will create a, a detailed, interesting video on it for you. Got no problems. In the meantime, check out some of my other videos and I will see you on the next one. Peace.